eighth mantra that we were doing was saving the high and low in that. Tasman drishte paravare drishte is to perceive tasman in that in that refers to the <clears throat> the brahman the almighty the consciousness paravare the high and the low apara is lower para is higher <clears throat> the lower is the perishable world so when you look at the, the world you understand the world as a mere figment of that mighty consciousness the entire world which is perishable matter is nothing but brahman the first step of recognizing brahman starts with understanding that everything in the world that which you like that which you hate most is brahman the most dearest to you and the most distant to you is brahman you must start seeing brahman in that that's the first step of the sadhana <clears throat> and once you have conquered every part of the world everything and being in the world you have not left as in the in the bhagavad gita the uh, 12th chapter he starts off by the 35 qualities of a bhakta 35 salient qualities of a devotee he says who is dear to me and the first quality he says advesta sarva bhutana he who has no hatred for any being. If I understand a crooked to be a crooked, a cunning to be a cunning, a malicious person to be malicious, what have I got to do with him? Understand it is their nature. I have got nothing to do with their nature. It is their nature. It is their swabhava. What have I got to do with them? It could be someone in your own backyard or it could be someone very distant to you. It is their nature. Let them deal with their vasanas. Let them deal with their karmas. I have got nothing to do with it. So if you detach yourself from their personality and if you are able to see the self, that's the first step. Then comes, you see the para. You see the imperishable in the perishable. I'm just explaining paravare. one who perceives the high and low in that. So the high, so the low is the perishable. The high is the imperishable in the perishable. You understand Brahman as not perishable. Brahman is that which pervades the entire matter. And then he says, you see beyond it. That the real self is the Uttama Purusha. So one who perceives that once knot of the heart is untied, the knots of heart we learned is avidya, avidya ignorance. All of us are enveloped by avidya. There is no escape because all of us are of not realize the self. Until you and I realize the self, we will be bound by avidya. Now the question is to what extent are we in the clutches of avidya? Avidya, the knot of avidya is kama and karma. Kama is desire and karma is the actions that are, in fact, subsequently that follow. Wherever there is a desire, there is bound to be desire prompted action. To the extent you have an ego, to that extent you will be egoistically asserting yourself what you are. Now, I think uh, you will have to bear 
little with me today because at the center we have no internet so i am making do with what best i could at this hour to stream live the satsang so if some of you are facing any intermittent issues please bear with me uh, if for some reason it is getting difficult maybe i will try with my video off so far so good yes guruji now it's uh, like a 90% it's good so continue as with the video on okay maybe i'll speak a little slow will that help gayatri ma no the zoom itself is taking care of it guruji oh then then i will speak at my usual pace then so the knot of avidya is kama and karma so to the extent you take care of avidya the root cause of desire is avidya ignorance and ignorance of what ignorance of your own self ignorance of your own fullness and the moment you do not realize the profundity of your own nature you would feel yourself very small you will be inflicted with sorrow and suffering you will be a victim of insecurity you will be in conflict with the world you will suffer the consequences all of us are going through the consequences it is a matter of relativity got to surrender your ego surrender your arrogance and accept it to so, ah uh, i know put that aside war a victim of the disease of avidya and only one who goes into the depths of this wisdom perceives that asmin drishthe paravare one who sees the brahman one who gets that gains the perception of the reality he gets that not untied you know i find it a great spiritual exercise i remember even my guru used to say that but i used to relate to it i could relate to it and i experienced it you know when we fly kite and especially if you are if you don't have anybody to hold that you know that what do you how do you say chakri in uh, in english ha huh? what did you garu you seem to be very knowledgeable here so we will tap your wisdom can you give us some training how to fly kites please and no, the wisdom no. institute to tomorrow morning there is a there will be a demo of how how to fly kites who are willing to come please come i do love guruji to fly kites uh, I, i know how yeah. how was it i know that that, that is a guruji speciality <laughs> uh, correct <laughs> Uh, so what do you uh, call that uh, we we, that, we call in a conventional language charka charka uh, that's uh, what the name a little of uh, hindi and burdu what we we yes. in that okay word. now imagine you are the only fellow flying and by god's grace and your luck the kite is flying high otherwise it will not take off also so you are alone struggling to fly where will it fly if you don't have the art and after it flies i you have to manage the kite flying and the rope and the reel of supplying of the reel and invariably what will happen they will get tangled Thank the you. rope the thin rope will get tangled and it will get up into a mess and then thereafter you will have to deal with that mangle the tangle you will have to deal with a knot and when a fine thread gets a knot it is the most difficult thing to undo it untie it if you have a wool and if it gets tied up because of the thickness you have perhaps a, a chance but if a fine thread it's gone you are, 
and trust me if you have that shraddha the real shraddha is tested where to ensure that okay this flow is to come out from here it has to go out from there and come here and do the ensure i will not snap it and i'll not tie a knot i want to retain the originality of the length of thread i see that as real sadhana real tapas if you can't untie that knot of a thread forget spiritual knot it's not easy what i'm saying is not easy you need that shraddha you need that bhavana to go through that exercise so the knot of avidya is kama and karma and to the extent that wisdom lights up when you instantly the darkness of avidya and the desires and attachments and kama all gone there will be no more of that anger there will be no more of that attachment there will be no more of that unnecessary bondage liberated that's what the rest of the half verse verse says the mantra says kshiyante sarva samshaya all your doubts are dispelled and kshiyante are exhausted what exhausted karmani your doubts are dispelled and actions are exhausted doubts here refers to your vasanas sarva samshaya all your doubts means all your vasanas and remember last week we gave the equation all your vasanas the aggregate vasanas that you have, you have the total bundle of your vasanas so the total vasanas which you have acquired through anek janma is known as sanchita vasanas sanchita are the total backlog and from the total backlog vasanas a few vasanas which need immediate rectification immediate manifestation that is the reason you are born so this embodiment is nothing but the expression of that little bundle and that bundle of vasanas with which you are born are known as prarabdha vasanas prarabdha vasanas are the vasanas that you are born with sanchita vasanas are the total vasanas now the total vasanas minus the vasanas that you are born is the balance known as agama agami agami means yet to be manifested yet to be expressed yet to be born sanchita prarabdha agami now what we are told not just with humans with any creature any living being these prarabdha vasanas are guaranteed exhaustion you will burn them for the sheer fact that you are using the fuel it's like you fill in your tank and you keep driving you have driven 50 100 200 kilometers what will happen to the fuel the fuel has is is being burnt out you keep driving to a point where the vehicle will come to a grinding halt because there is no further propulsion possible because the fuel is empty so the point where the the vehicle will come to a grinding halt because there is no further propulsion is us prarabdha repeat the question Why are you laughing, Gayatri Ma? Ah, uh, what's the question? Where the where the uh, was where your desires come to a halt? The you have to exhaust when the vehicle. When yeah. the vehicle will come to a grinding halt, there is no further propulsion. Is akin yeah. to. 
you mean is akin to what is that a death ah that's all <laughs> yeah. don't think beyond it when the vehicle comes to a stop i have filled in the vehicle at the petrol station i filled the tank i have traveled a distance the fuel is exhausted the vehicle will come to a grinding halt that symbolizes the beginning of birth the end of this birth so this embodiment is finished is dead now i am not able to use the board because i don't have much luxury of buffer internet if i add another instrument it would drag so otherwise i would use the board and explain to you all so this is b1 so b1 is birth one birth one is born with let's say 10 vasanas the prarabdha vasanas of b1 is 10 so these 10 vasanas what are we said amitama i hope you noted the point what are we said with reference to these 10 vasanas arya guruji that it will get exhausted in the tenure of b1 it will automatically get exhausted without any purushartha purushartha means without any effort on your part the fact that you will go through the experience the fact that you have driven the vehicle it will automatically get burnt out there is effort less effort if you have a vasana for music you will be singing music all through your life whether other listens others listen to you or not is another story but you will keep singing and end of your janma what will happen that vasana for singing is gone no more vasana your vasana for climbing mountain you will keep climbing until your knees worn out and then you will say appa now my vasana for mountaineering is finished what happened the desire is burnt out how not through gnanam and vigyanam through anubhavam you go through the experience and burnt out so this prarabdha vasanas will be burnt out without your effort without you knowing it so my appeal to you all is don't worry oh why didn't you tell this before sir i would not take a note of all the time i am taking notes of all this now you say don't worry ritikar was thinking are you should have told this don't worry i was seriously taking notes of all these things points sir don't worry because they will automatic exhaustion like for example in an animal an animal is born let's say a hippopotamus a hippopotamus has a particular nature vasana it let's say it is an extremely tamasic animal all right now that animal it burns exhausted vasana in its embodiment now what does an animal do the difference between an animal and a human is as you know we have purushartha self effort they don't have purushartha so with reference to prarabdha vasanas you are like another animal we are like another animal you don't have to put an effort they are automatically taken care of by nature because you have fuel that will drive you into experiences and you experience it and you burn it off chalo khatam empty but the advantage a human birth which an animal birth does not have what is advantage that a human can tap the 90% sanchita vasanas that is there in the backlog now i am just giving a figure this 10 vasanas can be 1000 vasanas this 90 can be 100000 vasanas in, in fact it is not a finite number it's a huge figure you have to deal with but what we are saying is in this embodiment because of the purushartha you and i have we can tap the sanchita and allow that sanchita to be expressed in this birth so what we mean at beginning of b1 what was your sanchita shiva ji simple mathematics sir at the beginning of b1 what was your sanchita balance
ஆ பேசுங்கோ சார் ஆடியோ இதை பிரச்சனை இருக்க ஈவன் லாஸ்ட் வீக் வீக் ஒன் இயர் யூ அது சரி பண்ணுங்கோ கேட்கல ஐ டோன்ட் திங்க் வீ கேன் ஹியர் யூ சம் இஷ்யூ சார் பாருங்கோ காயத்ரிமா சொல்லுங்கோ வாட் இஸ் த சஞ்சிதா பேலன்ஸ் அட் த பிகினிங் ஆஃப் பி ஒன் as per this it is 90 at the beginning of b word b1 your sanchita is 110 is in this prarabdha so 90 is balance 90 is the uh, balance sariya now through self effort what can you do you can bring 90 down to 50 or you can make 90 to 200 also so through your own effort you can either get rid of the dirt or acquire more dirt you can either evolve spiritually or devolve spiritually that license you have so acquiring more vasanas unnecessarily creating more desires you will only get bound by the knot of avidya that is spiritual devolution but if you choose to tap the wealth of wisdom so there are two ways of getting rid of any vasana the two ways are one is through knowledge another is through experience prarabdha vasanas experience prarabdha vasanas are only dealt with experience correct so knowledge will not work but we have we don't have to worry of that what we have to worry we have to worry of the the balance backlog which are yet to manifest the agami we have to take care of the 90% which are yet to manifest you can take care of so what do you do you can you have the choice of using your buddhi you using your intellect use your wisdom to check mate the vasana whenever your mind entertains a thought or a craving for possession and enjoyment of the world like in chess you check mate you check mate the vasana you check mate the thought you challenge the thought and see can you withhold the pressure of that vasana within you by not going along with it can i say no to it and say see what will happen can i withhold that force of nature and say no to it and be remain calm and mature and say i will continue to do irrespective of what my mind wants what my mind craves i say no keep quiet shut up as christ said get thee behind me satan i will have none at thy hands christ said that so you will have to tell your mind i will have nothing to whatever you try to pull me into i have no interest in it you say no to it and see can you go on with your sadhana can you go on with your tapas can you go on seeking the higher without falling a prey to your mind's demands that is how you inject wisdom or knowledge to deal with your vasanas by saying no to it by checkmating it oh you say oh 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 correct neti neti i don't want to do anything with it correct sir so you do that but sometime a time comes where you can't withhold the power the pressure of desire the sheer vega the sheer force of desire is such that you can't help but give a license to it then what will happen then you will use the second option of going through the experience you will go into the experience for what purpose you will go into the experience why are you going into the experience why did you checkmate the vasana did you not checkmate the vasana what did you checkmate amita ma why did you checkmate the vasana with your intellect 
Sorry, so your question is why? Is it? Mm. Mm. Yeah. To exhaust it. To get rid of it. To right? get rid of it. You checkmated it with the intellect to get rid of it. When you realize that the desire is too strong, I can't keep away from giving into the mind means allowing the mind to take me through the experience. You chose to go, go, go through the experience, right? Yeah. Yes. What is the objective of getting into the experience? Same thing, to get rid of it, to experience it and say, I've had enough, I've, I've done it. To go through it with the only reason, only to get rid of it. You are, what is the, what is the opposite of that? To keep uh, desiring it, to keep entertaining it in your mind. No, I'm not talking of the mind here. I'm talking of the experience. Opposite what people do, the opposite of using an experience to exhaust a vasana. What people do? How do people use experience as? For what do they use it? Sorry, sir. I think I'm not following uh, your train. Hmm. A, a child looks at a, a chocolate or an ice cream or a toy. What does a child see in that chocolate or an ice cream or a toy? Pleasure, the sensual pleasure. The sensual pleasure, the satisfaction, the enjoyment, the relish, the linger. So when a person, an ignorant person, a lay person looks at sense objects, they look at it as an avenue of pleasure and enjoyment. But a spiritual seeker may go through the same experience like a child or a, a, a materialistic or sensualist, but the objective is, I have given all my effort to deal with my vasana. I don't know what karma I have done in the past that I have got this vasana in me. Now, how do I deal with it? I'm trying my best to deal with knowledge, but I don't have enough wisdom to deal with it. What do I do? I will go through the experience very carefully with the only interest of getting rid of my vasana. I have no interest in the joy or the maja or the fun or the excitement in that experience. Nah, I am not interested. Let me go through it very carefully, very mindfully that I should not fall a trap to the enjoyment in it. If I fall, I am only giving into the desire and creating more desires or strengthening it further. So I am using experience as a means to get rid of my vasana. It is a, it's like you're walking. Imagine there's a, some, you know, it's, it's, let's say the lady in the house has spilled the oil on your marble flooring. Marble itself is slippery surface. And imagine the lady in the house has spilled the oil. How slippery it would be for you to walk through that surface. But yet you have no, you have no choice but to walk through. How will you walk? Are you not careful of every step, mindful of every step forward so that you don't fall? Similarly, you will walk into the experience with complete alertness that there is immense danger of me getting involved by being enchanted by the world and what it throws at me. I don't want to be enchanted by the world I'm using the experience as just a via means to get to the goal. I have no interest in this passage. I have no interest in this. So the attitude of a man who wants to get to the self or to the reach the goal is, I have to untie the knot of avidya. If it means through knowledge, I will do it. If it means through experience, I'll do it. So the objective is, I will have none at thy hands. I will not fall a prey to the vasana. But yet I know it is my purva karma. I am born with this vasana. So what can I do? I can't do anything for my past mistakes. 
I can be accountable for my present actions. My present actions are well resolved. I'm very clear how I want to move forward. What will be my actions now? I know I will only be interested in that and move forward. And that is how you use either knowledge or experience to deal with the knot of the heart. But you got to be extremely careful when you go through experience. But be careful, huh? don't end up justifying it. Oh, I'm using experience to exhaust my wasana. You will fall a trap. You will fall a prey. What come may, what come may, you should not fall a prey. For example, if somebody I'm just giving an example. Let's say you take a transport from place A to place B. It will cost you 50 rupees. A distance of 5 to 8 minutes will call 50 rupees in India. You know, auto you take. But if a person pays twice or thrice the amount and comes, that person has no value for the money. That person has not put in any effort. If I, if I were that person, I would say, I will not pay twice, thrice the money for the same distance. I'll walk the distance. Five minutes by road will take 20 minutes by walk. Good exercise for me. I'll try that. I do not justify, oh, nothing is available at that rate. So these people are charging more. I, do, I pay more and enjoy comfort. I will rather walk the distance than paying that little extra, not ex little extra, so much extra for that for, for my comfort. This is what I call justification. At every step, at every opportunity, will you put yourself through discomfort? Every step, are you ready to put tapas? That is the only way you can justify yourself. The moment you start defending yourself, the moment you start using the same knowledge to support your own vasanas and desires, invariably it is pampering yourself. You are falling a prey to it. So there is no you don't, you treat yourself as you treat a stranger. And we learn in Vedanta. How do you treat yourself? No less, no more than a stranger. You don't have to hate him or like him. But how do we treat ourselves? Have you ever punished yourself? No. This fellow must be punished. Who? Myself. Who is saying that? I am saying it. Somebody else tells that is understandable. But I should tell myself that I must be punished. Because I will not give in to the ego in you. I will not give in to the desires in you. I will not fall prey to the mind. To think that way itself is sadhana. Otherwise you are fallen prey. The mind is too, 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 too smart. Too, 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 too strong. It will have its way. Trust me. It will find its way to bully you. It will find its way to make you believe that what you're doing is right. And it can be completely detrimental to you. There's no way you will understand the trick and ploy of the mind. So the only way you have is not to agree with it. Just keep saying no to it. Until you have no way but to go with it. But don't give up until you fail fighting the battle. That is the tapas. The moment you give up without fighting, that is surrendering the mind to the mind. That is justification. So experience is the last resort. Man, I'm not able to sleep. I'm having sleepless nights because I want to enjoy an ice cream. Aha, okay. Ice cream is bothering you that much that it is not able to give you a proper sleep. Okay, chalo yaar. 
I am not in that state where I can handle this desire. Let me go and eat not one ball, two balls of ice cream. Appease that fellow temporary. Temporary appease. Huh? You're not going to get rid of the desire from the root. Temporary shanti until for another week or two or until it sees another ad or sees somebody else eating an ice cream, a ting, it will pop up again. I want it. 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 We'll start making noise. Shut up. Every time it says want it, shut up. Shanti. Neti. No. No. That is how this is a sadhana. It's an internal sadhana. So there is no specific spiritual path. You have to deal with your vasanas. And one who deals with knowledge. But here the shastras don't give a room for experience. They only talk of Jnanam, Jnanam, Jnanam. For them, they are not, they don't care for experience because they are not at that level. The student is very high level. In fact, in the, in the third chapter of the Gita, he talks of how to go through experience. Correct, Hariji? Third chapter, yeah. The third chapter, he mentions of it there. Okay, right. Let's move.